I mentioned the free speech. I think it's, 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 it's absolutely clear that the First Amendment, which has five components to it, one of which is freedom of the press, freedom to assemble, but freedom of speech, uh, our Supreme Court has said time and time again that it's not an unfettered right. For example, and I gave you a couple of examples earlier, I can't defame you even though I would be expressing my, my speech. Uh, with respect to the right to assemble, it's not an unfettered right. You can't just assemble any time, any place where you want. The state can impose restrictions on it. Uh, with respect to being free from an unreasonable search and seizure, the Supreme Court has said that when your automobile is stopped, there are exceptions to the uh, Fourth Amendment freedom to, uh, to be free from unreasonable search and seizures. Um, and I could go on and on with other rights. So, let's just be clear in summary, I certainly agree with Patrick that when our founding fathers decided after they met in Philadelphia in 1787 that we needed a Bill of Rights, and they came up with them, they followed the Virginia plan, from the, for the last 200 years, our Supreme Court has spoken, and they have said, uh, they have clearly demonstrated that those rights are to be protected, but they're not unfettered rights. And that's why we're here today, because some of those rights dealing with guns is where I think we diverge. Craig, you got something, then I'm gonna get to Dennis. Uh, yes, actually, the founders said that our rights come from God, so they, they don't have the power to even grant us our rights, let alone curtail our rights. Our rights end where our neighbor and fellow citizen rights begin. And so if, if, if I infringe on uh, your rights, that's the line. And, and, and furthermore, the, uh, the First Amendment has six clauses. In all my adult life, I've heard it said there's five clauses. And you two gentlemen were, were a little bit at odds with that. Uh, Patrick got it right. The first two are the two separate and distinct clauses. The, the freedom from having religion forced upon you, uh, of which you don't want to participate in, and the uh, right to uh, practice your religion freely. And then you have um, speech, the press, the right of free association, which has just been thrown out um, in by the Supreme Court and the right to petition your government. There's six, and so uh, with the messaging of saying there's five, which I've, all my adult life I've heard that, they take the first two and include them as one and call it the Establishment Clause, thereby giving it the negative connotation that, the, the, and there's two of them there. One is Establishment and one is Free Exercise. They are their own separate and distinct clauses. And 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 and, uh, and and I like that. I like you, Joe. <laughs> Just so, <laughs> if you if you and, if you and Pat could um, you know go go back and forth on that. Um, but it, it's, it, and one last thing is is the language. I think Larry mentioned the language of the founders. That words we use today uh, we take as a modern meaning. But uh, when the founders wrote what a militia was, a militia was the entire people. And the primary purpose was not just uh, to, to defeat an invading army, but, and I, I don't want to read them. I, anyone wants to see me later, I've got plenty of quotes from the founding fathers here on the actual purpose. Was one of the purposes was for our government not to get too big for their bridges. But I hear you saying the same thing Joe's saying, and that is really your rights start becoming I'll, limited by where you start. It limits, your, right, when we go rights. too far. If I, if I go too far, it, then that's where my rights, not, the government doesn't, doesn't do it. Let me pass to Dennis here. Then. 